It's impossible to look at these Euros without reflecting on that amazing time 25 years ago, Euro 96. In the build-up to these Euros, I've kind of gone back 25 years with two guys who are really strong memories and great insight in what it meant to them and the team in the build-up and during the tournament and afterwards. So, I mean, you were a bit of a late starter for England, weren't you? What, 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 took, them, what took them so long? You were 27. Yeah, good question. I, had, um, I was probably in better form when I was around 24, 25 and thought the, the chance might come to be picked for England. Uh, and then just when my form was dipping a little bit, I got picked uh, for a international Poland away we were playing, uh, where I made my debut. And it was kind of out of the blue. I wasn't doing so well at the time and, um, and got the chance when, when I was least expecting it. Well, it's interesting because you were born just before England won the World Cup. Mm -hmm. And then Euro 96 came just after your 30th birthday, <clears throat> I think. Didn't it? I mean, what, what were your feelings about England in your first 30 years? I mean, can you remember 1990? I mean, where did you watch that semi-final then? Yeah, um, I can remember, I mean, all the excitement was about Gaza then, wasn't it? He just came on the scene and he was so exciting. I can remember being in a pub, I think I was down in South End, and uh, just getting carried away with everyone then. Obviously, I was a professional footballer by then, but um, what would I have been, 24, something like that? And uh, just in, enjoying being part of the crowd, watching it, and the excitement that it, it brought to so many people watching Gaza um, turn it on, and, and, and England coming so close to to being um, mm -hmm. in the final. It, it's, I'm trying to remember how little expectation there was of England going into '96. Um, well, we'd had a tough time. We didn't qualify for '94 World Cup, so it was it was um, Terry Venables had taken over. And I know from working with Terry, or I knew from working with Terry, that things could be very optimistic. And I was very excited about, about that. And uh, once he got involved and the team changed its shape and, and the way we played football, the way we took the game to the opposition, I think um, everybody picked up on it very, very quickly. And, and the optimism uh, generated very, very quickly. And then by the time of the start of the tournament, I mean, you say the there wasn't much pressure on us to win it, but there always is when you're playing for England, especially on home soil. So what was it about Terry then? The players I've spoken to have said he just talked in language you can understand, as simple as don't come in with your shorts dirty, you know, because, you know, it, you know it means you've been on your backside and you're no good to anybody there. You know, I mean, stuff that simple. Uh, more to than that, not, not quite like that, but um, he, he had a way of making you feel good. It, obviously, you're playing at the top level, but he had a way of making you understand that oh, what was expected. Easy layman terms for us to understand, for everybody, for the whole unit. I always remember the, him saying to me personally, you know, when you, when you speak to a, a group, it's no good the best two players understanding what I want. You've got to have 19, 20 of the 20 players understanding exactly what you want. And uh, that's, that's what he had about him, that he made everybody understand exactly you know you might go to that point in the room and that point in the room and say you know you got it yep yeah, yes boss and then you move on from there it sounds very easy doesn't it but you know so many managers that i've played with played under make it hard work and you come out and you have the meeting and you're like what so what what is it and you can see other players thinking that you know there was none of that with terry you know it was clear cut this is what we're going to do and if they do that that's going to be the issue in terms of pre-tournament preparation, I don't mean to be critical, but it, it, going off to Hong Kong on a night nights out supervised by Brian Robson doesn't doesn't seem the cleverest. I mean, it all worked out in the end. But I mean, what what are your thoughts on that? How did that sort of come yeah, about? Yeah, that's a little bit blasé of how it was set up. I mean, you know, we, we was there to play a couple of games to 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 get our team ethic right for the competition. Um, and on top of that, we was allowed out for a night. I don't think he envisaged that we would end up in that position, oh. that the way it was. We know it did, didn't look right. It didn't look very good um, to the public, and and he wasn't best pleased about it. But and he he 
he let us know in uncertain terms. Mm. But the fact of the matter with what he did afterwards to the press was, was pure genius for us. That he just said to the press, look, I, I allowed them out. It's on my shoulders. You know, it doesn't look great, uh, but it's, it's my fault for letting them out. And he protected the players. Mm. We, we could have got even more uh, ambush for that. For, you know, the, we, could have, we could have got castigated even mm. more so. But he defended us. And you look at him and go, love that. I'm not accepting anything. If you've got any proof, have you? We're Photo just going by what Catholic Photographs. Like. Photographs. You take, oh, you take their word, but you don't take ours. Is that what it is? No. Well, there was a fair amount of criticism and piety. But, I mean, I for one and millions of others looked at the pictures and thought, what a night out that must have been. I mean, look, now, was it a cracking night out? I mean, was it, was it just night an unforgettable it, night? It, it was a great night out, yeah. Great fun. I mean, you, you're out with 20 of your mates that, that you've been allowed out for a night out. You know you've got four weeks of staying in. You know you've had a few couple of weeks of staying in. You know, we're allowed one night out. Again, it's not great pictures mm. that you end up the way we did, but, yeah. you know, you want to enjoy yourself for that one night. And... Mm. We certainly did. What I don't understand is how, what happened to all the clothes, the ripping of the clothes is the bit I didn't understand. I mean, who knows? When you, I, I don't know how it got like that, but um, it just seemed like a, a fun, stupid thing to do at the time. But um, obviously the pictures don't look great. Okay, so you all got, I mean, you all got carried away, yeah. you know, just, and that, I think that carried on the plane home. And then, I don't know whether that brought you together because you were being criticised as a group. Yeah. Terry was sort of shielding you from that. I just wondered whether it contributed to, all right, well, we'll show them kind of attitude. I think, I think that what is exactly how it brought us together. You know, it brought us together with the management. You know, I, again, I obviously knew about Terry from playing for him, but the players that only got, get to see him for three days and then go and disappear to their uh, clubs. And then when someone defends you like that, you know, it, it gives you a, mm. a sturdiness in your group and a unity that that, um, that perhaps you wouldn't have got if we'd have mm. stayed at home and, and stayed at Burnham Beaches and, and all been on the quiet front. Mm. So, in the immediate build-up, you were in a, where were you? Burnham Beaches then, yeah. immediately before the thing. And what um, what was that like? Um, yeah, it was good. Yeah, we we had we had lots of uh, stuff to to play. You know, the golf course was just down the road. Uh, table tennis in the room, snooker and darts or whatever, you know, there, there was plenty for a tennis that we could yeah. go and have a game of if we wanted to, if we were getting bored. And then plus you got Gaza to look after yeah. as well. So, <laughs> I was uh, say, yeah. so that, yeah. that was that was the uh, the focal point, right. I would say. I mean, did you, I mean, I suppose to a certain, he must have been entertaining at first and join in with him and egg him on, but after a while, surely you thought, hang on, we just got to calm him down here, uh, the, you know, just. Um, a bit of everything. I mean, you would think that he would drive you mad, but when someone is so funny in the manner that he was, always up to mm. something, that um, it made it fun and, and buzzy. I mean, it's a long time to spend with a group of lads sitting in there, you train, you have breakfast, you train, you have lunch, you're all sitting together, you know. You need that breakup of, of, the, of the boredom as such. So who was big in that group? As I mean, apart from Terry, obviously, and I think Terry did say at one stage, he had nine club captains, mm. I think, in there. But was there anyone, I don't know, is there anyone you think you sort of glued it together who maybe doesn't get mentioned and um, dispatches that much? Well, someone else did something for Euro 96 and they said to me that Tony Adams didn't really want to be involved in it. And I said, well, you tell him for me that, you tell him for me that he's got to be involved because he was our main man. He was our captain, he was our leader. He, he had that way of, bringing people in, you know, if someone was sitting over there, come over here, come over here, come and join in. You know, don't, don't be over there, this is our team, you know. And he had that way, so mm. anything that around Euro 96 and Tony Adams isn't involved in, doesn't work right for me, doesn't sit right, because he was our leader, and that, that's how mm. I think everyone looked up to him. So Switzerland came around, and it sort of, we laboured a bit, didn't we? Um, what are your thoughts on that game? You know, it was a quiet start. <laughs> yeah, hot. Uh, hot, sunny Saturday afternoon. Ball very sticky. Uh, grass, not not you no know, water on it. So mm. the ball didn't zip around. So you could play one touch football. It was tough. Uh, Switzerland made it very hard for us. And I think in the end we was probably 
pleased that we got a draw. So you know, it doesn't knock you out of the tournament, and you're not you're not flying, got flying mm. colours around you. But um, we were happy to get a draw because we didn't play the best that we could have done. Mm. But um, but we're still off and running in the tournament. So we get to Scotland then. And the first half was, wasn't great, was it? There was, I think Redknapp came on at half time, didn't he? Was there a tactical switch that changed things? Yeah, yeah, there was. Uh, you know, when, when you analyse it, when, when you look back at Euro 96, it wasn't all such plain sailing when everyone says, oh, it was fantastic mm -hmm. times and all that. You know, things weren't as swimmingly great as what, as what <laughs> uh, you know. You forget those bits, the, Yeah, the picture yeah. is painted, but... You know, sometimes you've got to dig in and, and this will be exactly the same with the Scottish game in, in Euros mm. 2020. That, you know, if you don't compete against the Scots, you're going to get, you're going to mm. get turned over. So, I mean, then we had, as you said, one of the greatest goals ever. What, what was your view on that? What, how do you remember? Cause we won't, we've seen it on the telly. You were... Uh, the I remember it very, very clearly. Uh, David Seaman hitting a long ball up from a, from a goal kick. I laid it off to Darren Anderton. And Darren Anderton played a beautiful floating ball over the top. And the rest is just pure genius from the way I see it. Gazza making out to hit it with his left foot, flicking it over the top of Colin Andrews' head and hitting it on the volley, superbly mm. past Andy Gorham. It was just, we'd seen it a million times, you know, throughout training. We knew Gazza had the capabilities to do this. Um, very, very special player. And um, for him to do it on that stage was, was quite fitting mm. against the two players that uh, he did it as well. Yeah. But the, the celebration it is almost as famous as the genius of the goal. I, I, I'm always astonished at the level of organisation that goes into it. And it looks spontaneous. Well, I mean, were you party to the planning of that? Uh, I think we were all party to it. And I think we said, you know, I'm not sure, probably Gaza said, mm. if, if we score today, let, let's make that celebration, you yeah. know, so that we can have a little bit of fun with it. And as I said, I, I was part of the makeup of the goal. So by the time the goal went in, I was probably still coming over the yeah. half, halfway line. So the celebration was there, but because I was in some of the pictures that were in the papers, mm. by the time I got there, not the quickest as well, yeah. so trotting up to yeah. be part of the celebrations, I wanted to do the celebration again. So I got Gaza back down on the floor and I've, I've got some pictures of me um, yeah, squirting, squirting more in there as well. So. Okay, but it wasn't. Was it? What was organised? You say if you'd scored, well, you would be. Would you have been yeah. receiving, yeah. so to speak? And of course, squirt. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we was all in the dentist chair at some stage. Yeah, you know, there was lots of different pictures that people mm. had taken. I think Robbie Fowler had had pictures of taken in there. Mm. Uh, I can't remember who else had pictures in there, but there, there was a few of us. So you know, it was a case of whoever scores today, let's mm. let's have a bit of fun. Okay, so we move on to Holland, right? And by now everyone's getting sort of super excited and stuff, but Holland are brilliant. I mean, how much confidence did you have going to that game? If somebody had told you, look, you're going to beat this lot 4-1, would you have said, yeah, I don't believe that? Or, Come on, no, 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 definitely not, definitely not. This was our big test. You know, obviously Swiss, the Swiss game was, was a tough one. The Scottish one was tougher, but you've, you've got four points out of that. And you still know that you need to get some sort of result to go through to the next stage. I think we needed a draw to go through, but the whole, the whole night was so different. As I say, the two previous games were three o'clock in the afternoon, very sticky, very hot. This was a night game, bit of dew on the grass, so the ball was zipping off. We had a lot of one-touch players that, that, could, that could play the game, uh, had players that could run with the ball as well, and it's a lot easier when there's a bit of dew on the grass. Um, and it, we just took off, um, scored an early goal, and just even looking back, the Dutch had a, you know, Dennis Bergkamp had three or four very, very good chances. Mm. So it could have been a very high, high goal scoring game. But we converted our chances. They didn't. Mm. And, it, and it looks like a route. It looks like a one sided game. But even that game was a, mm. a very, very even game amongst two very good teams. But mm. we took our chances and they didn't. Once we beat the Dutch the way we did, not just the scoreline, mm. but the way we played football that night, I think. The whole nation was was bubbling. You know, it was generating so much excitement and, and optimism. And I think, you know, there was a real sense that we could go on and win the tournament. You know, and you could feel that. We was in Burnham Beach's hotel, but you could feel it on the way to games, on the way to training. That you know, everybody well wishing you. You know, you could. The the public were very very excitable. Uh, so going into the Spain game, that that's exactly how how we were really. You know, you you read a lot of the press that we're 
on national TV every day and the news is on and everybody's speculating about what's going to happen. Uh, it was exciting times and the whole, the whole nation was, as I say, it was throffing at the mouth for us to, to continue. Yeah. You know, you, you're, you're bubbling, you, you're feeling great about things because we're, we're, we're topping our, our little league in that way and we're into the quarterfinals and we're feeling good about ourselves. So, uh, you, you know, as a footballer, you try and bring yourself down. When, when you get kicked in the teeth, you try and bring yourself yeah. up. When you're bubbling too high, you try and bring yourself down so that you keep on an even keel because the next game brings mm. another challenge and the Spanish game was a, a, a very tough challenge. Mm. I suppose as a player, the one thing you can't experience is what's going on elsewhere in the country. And I'm telling you, it was just incredible. The motorways were empty. I was at Lords watching a test match and during the penalty shooter, it went completely quiet. And then everybody went berserk. I mean, Dickie Bird was the umpire, harumphing, <laughs> you know, what's all this was going really? on? Yeah. Yeah, 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 and I just, you know, you can't experience no, that, no. you know. And the famous song, Three Lions, the whole country was singing it. Were you singing it? Was it something you were aware of as players? No doubt. You know, it's a very catchy tune, isn't it? So mm. uh, the fact that that catchy tune had come about and we were doing so well, yeah, without a doubt, I'm sure, I'm sure we were uh, having a little hum mm. to it. OK, so Spain's out the way. Right, then Germany. And, I mean, ahead of the game, did you believe you could beat them? I think our, our manager made us believe that we could beat them. Um, we, had a, we had a feeling that we could beat them and we went into that game. Hmm. Not expecting, but hoping to beat them. And we, you know, we, we were playing as a team. It was a, it was a lovely way to feel. You know, when you look around the change room beforehand, you go, it'll do for me. I'm glad he's in my team. I want him in my team. You know, I'm glad I'm not playing against him today. I'm glad he's on my side. And you look around the, t the whole change room and you've got so many players there and you're thinking, I like the look of this team. So we, we was in a very comfortable place. Do you think it's possible we scored too early? <laughs> I mean, I felt, oh, it's going to be a bit boring now, it's in the back. I mean, I trust you weren't feeling like that, but... No, you, oh no. maybe sometimes you do feel like that, that how easy was that? Mm. It was a set piece that we'd, we'd tried many times and sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't. When it does come off, it does look so easy. How easy was that? But uh, perfect corner, uh, lovely flick on, and Alan getting across his man in the box and, mm. you know, scores an easy goal. But I um, can assure you it had been worked on many, many times. So uh, it was lovely to see it come off. And then it turned into a, you know, a right old battle. You know, the, I mean, how emotionally exhausting was it to be part of, you know, as it went into extra time and so on? Um, I don't think you get, I don't think you get wrapped up in the emotionally exhausting side of it. That's for everybody else watching. We, we can do something about it. So you, you keep your, keep your calm, keep your cool. Um, I think probably watching the game is the worst, mm -hmm. per, worst position for family and friends that, yeah. are, that are there and uh, on your side. I mean, I, I didn't realise till I was just preparing to see you that you took our fifth penalty. Mm. So you think of the years of hurt that Gareth's had mm. since. I mean, that could have been you. Yeah. You know, I mean, were your legs going wibbly wobbly? As With, you... Without a doubt. It's the most nervous I've ever been on a football pitch. Taking a, taking a penalty for your country, especially the fifth penalty. Sudden death. You know, you know yeah, that. effectively. You know if you miss, you're going to get ridiculed for the rest of your life. You know, so many players have been remembered for missing a penalty for England that, that knocks you out of a major competition. So adding that pressure to this penalty, it was just immense, as I say, the, the worst, I've, worst pressure I've ever felt. But sometimes you put the ball on the spot and you think to yourself, Jesus, that goalkeeper looks massive, how am I going to score? Yeah. But this particular time, I put the ball on the spot, looked up and saw the goalkeeper and he looked quite small. It was uh, Kopka, the goalkeeper's mm -hmm. name, and he, he wasn't the biggest goalkeeper, but he might have been in a little crouching position at the time, and I just thought, wow, he looks tiny. If I put this penalty exactly where I want it to go and the pace that I want it to go at, there's no way he can save it, even though if a goalkeeper goes early, they can save even the penalty right in the top mm -hmm. corner. So, but I just, the confidence came over to me that I'd take, taken a million penalties 
If I put this penalty exactly where I want it to go, with the pace I want on it, it will go in the back of the net. So I stepped back up, ran up to the ball, made out to hit it hard and put my side foot, right foot, into exactly where I wanted it to go, high to the keeper's left. Mm. And when it hit the back of the net, that relief mm. and buzz of excitement that we're still in the competition, mm -hmm. you know, just the, it drained and then, you know, exploded that, that you know, I'd, I'd scored. And then the relief to, yeah, to, yeah. to score a penalty for England. And then poor Gareth. As mm. you saw him walking up, what did you think? Do you get a feeling about these things? Um, I think I was probably quite surprised that it was Gareth next. I don't know what the conversations were mm. about who was taking the next penalties, but someone probably said to him, right, if we have the, the first five, mm. are you, are you re OK to take one? Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, thinking, well, we're all going to take one, aren't we, at some stage. Mm. I doubt that he would have said, knowing Gareth, I don't think he would have said, yeah, I'll have the sixth one. You know, I don't think he would have put himself up for mm. that kind of uh, position. But, you know, wasn't to be. Mm. But he walked away disconsolate. I mean, a lot of players just mm. stick their chin out. But, you know, Gareth looked broken. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think I'm speaking out of term when I say it. it still weighs heavily on it. Yeah, whatever happened to him, do you know? No idea. He, oh. he bounced back. I did think he? he's involved this time. Did he? Backroom stuff. Okay. Um, okay. The, but what did you say to him after? I mean, is there anything you can say? Do you, or, you, or a footballer savage and immediately start the Mickey taking? Uh, no, I, I don't. No, nah, I don't think it's the time for Mickey taking. It's just a case of you try and put yourself in someone else's shoes and um, console them. Uh, he probably won't have remembered anything that anyone said to him that night, but uh, I'm sure everyone would have been around him at, at some mm. stage to to say, you know, don't worry about it. Life mm. goes on. You know, it could have happened to any one of us, and, and it could have without a doubt. Mm. So what? Can you remember your feelings after? I My think? initial feeling is, you know, from all the excitement, all the euphoria, all the bubbling. Mm. The atmosphere just generating for the last two weeks that that this is it we're you know mm. we're going all the way cut and it's like that's it it's all over you've got to go home mm. wow oh that's it you know and, and it is that it is that mm. surreal that it's like oh end of mm. Yeah, and that is where, you know, fans and players are very different and don't really get each other, I don't think. But at that moment, the fans are thinking exactly that, what you just described. Mm. Oh, right. Oh, no. Mm. Very, very surreal feeling after the way you'd felt for the last two weeks, mm. you know. You haven't got a third, fourth play, playoff place to play. You, 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 haven't, you know, it's just, that's it. But, mm. you know, everyone has that feeling at some stage in mm. the... In the I suppose it's even worse when you go out on penalties like that because that is it cut and dried there in that moment, isn't it? Mm. So look, you won a Champions League, three Premier Leagues and an FA Cup. So where can finishing as a losing semi-finalist rate in terms of your life's experience in football? How does Euro 96 rate? And uh, compared to all the others, I loved every minute of it. I mean, it's a, it was a, it was a long couple of weeks. It was fantastic to be involved in, but, but at the end of the day, you're in football to, to win stuff. That's what people remember. Obviously, I, I still speak about Euro '96 a lot with people, but it ends in ifs and buts. You know, when you talk about winning the, the treble with Manchester United, mm. it, you know, there's a, there's an end product and. You know, the medals are there, the trophies are there, the pictures are there for, for all to see. Mm. So it's easier to explain. But to be involved in Euro 96 with the players that I was involved in, it was a real pleasure mm. uh, to, to be involved in it and so excited and so pleased that, that I did. Mm. But, you know, we were close. So looking at this year, what are, you, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm excited. I'm excited with what uh, Gareth is, is doing. Um, I like the fact that he's worked under Terry Venables as well. And he will take a lot from what he did in Euro 96. The way he tried to build that, that team spirit. 
uh, that unity, that club feel. I think it's very, very important for, the, mm. for them all to come together. You know, all the top teams have all got players in there and it's, you know, you play against each other week in, week out. You've got to forget all that. You've got to come together as a real unit because any little splits in the camp will will get shown up at some stage in the in the mm. in the competition. So get into it, stick together, fight like hell at times, show your skill at times, but you know, make sure you give your all because I'm here now twenty five years later and we're ifs and buts. Give it your best and come back as heroes.